Hey guys, Noah here. It's May 18th, the uh, first canoe trip of the season. We're heading north to Algonquin Park for a couple days and uh, we're just about ready to go, so let's head out. Okay, well, Noah's bringing some stuff down to the lake and I want to just show you what we're doing different this year. So I've got this barrel pack that we've used for the past three years. And, you know, the thing is barrel packs have, you know, they, they definitely have their function and everything. They're very durable for this outdoor use, but I think they're more trendy than actual functional. So instead what I did was I picked up this uh, uh, dry bag and it's a backpack dry bag same volume as the barrel so we're going to give it a shot Well, we found our camp spot for the night and I like it. It's a, it's got a nice fire pit and a little bench built up. It's a, it's got a little hill behind it, but you know, we're not expecting any heavy rain or anything like that. Um, as you can see, a great view of the lake, a few little islands over to the other side of me and the sun's gonna set, you know, over to my left here and yeah, we should be able to get some sunset as well, I think. So, yeah, it's nice. Okay, so I was telling you how I'm using a dry bag backpack this time instead of a barrel. The main reasons are that the barrel is heavy on its own. You know, even before you load it up with food, it's got weight to it. The other reason is that 
it you're stuck to the shape of the barrel you know and you got to make sure you got to cram things into a fixed shape the barrel wasn't going to move at all so i found last year on our 10 day trip i brought the barrel and a dry bag that time it was just a cheap bag um, to try out i found that the bag in ways was better now like i said it was a cheap bag it lasted the trip but it's not going to last another you know heavy trip so i invested in a new one i've got a it's an aqua quest 30 liter dry bag backpack um so you can just imagine like because it's material it flexes and you can fit things in better you squeeze and you know cram everything in whereas i found the barrel you put stuff in it but there was a lot of air space so the other thing is the barrel's really uncomfortable on a long portage so again backpack it's a backpack it's made for carrying so so that's why i'm trying to switch now there's a lot of misconception that the barrel keeps bears out and i'll tell you that's not the case at all bear will get into your barrel regardless the trick is to hang your food bag properly and the proper way is using a pulley system so that's what i'm going to do now and i'll show you how i'm setting it up Okay, so what I've got right now is I've got a length of paracord. You know, it's a nice colorful zombie paracord. I guess zombies like purple and lime green, but anyhow, it's colorful so that I can see it. Um, now, what I've done is I've tied, this is a three quarter inch pulley on the one end, and I've tied it on with a, a running bowline knot. And then I've just made a, a loop knot and clipped on these carabiners which I'll remove later on but they're there to add more weight to the paracord. See the thing is if you don't have enough weight when I chuck this up over the branch it'll go up but then the cord will weigh as much as the little bit hanging on the other side of the branch so you want enough weight on one end that it will help pull down you know the weight of the rope on the other. Okay, so that's step one. Tie on a three quarter inch or one inch pulley onto the end of your paracord. All right, so now I've done step two, which is throwing the paracord over a tall branch. Now, how high up do you wanna go? You wanna go as high as you can go. Um, you know, depending on where you are, sometimes it's incredibly difficult to find a good branch, but the rule of thumb is go as high as you can go, all right? Um, so the paracord is up and over the branch. Now I'm going to run my other piece of paracord through my pulley. I can also take off these carabiners now. Now that I have the paracord run, now that I have the paracord run through the pulley, I'm going to lift the pulley up and I'm going to go not right up to the top. I'm going to come down. So I'm actually about five to 10 feet away from the branch that I've gone over. Okay, so now that I'm up there, I'm gonna take the end that's tied to the pulley, not the two ends that loop through, but the end that's tied to it, and I'm gonna tie off to my base tree. Okay, so this is my anchor tree. The next step is that I just tied a simple loop knot at the end of the one end of the paracord. This is the end that feeds up and through the pulley. And then I've attached my carabiner. And now I'm going to attach this, uh, this dry bag, backpack, onto it. Okay, so this is my food bag. Now, here's the thing. All the time I hear people say things like, you know, I've been camping for 20 years and never had a bear get into my food, or I hung my food and a bear got into it. You know, there's always excuses why it doesn't work. It does work, okay? To the person who says, you know, for 20 years I've been camping and never got a bear into my food, well, you know, there's probably a dozen people who have been camping for 20 years who have had a bear get into their food. So you're just lucky. Um, and for the people who have hung their food and had a bear, it obviously just wasn't hung properly. And I'm guilty of that too. Last summer, 
a bear got into our food, actually it was the barrel, um, opened it up no problem, as if the bear, you know, had opened them up a million times before. When I went out, you know, scare the bear away, and I saw how it was hung, it wasn't hung properly. So, yeah, bears climb trees. If you hang your food up against the tree, expect the bear to climb up the tree and, you know, open it up. So, this method, what is going to happen is the food bag is going to be lifted up and then we're going to pull it away from the tree using the pulley. Okay? So, as you can see right now, I'm going to lift up. And then as I pull away, the bag comes away from the tree. Okay, so I'm gonna hang this and then I'll show you what it looks like. The bag is hung up high, right? I'm a bear, I can't reach it, right? And if I was to climb up, hopefully it's out of reach as well, right? So, yeah, so that's the pulley system to hang a food bag. Okay, now there's one other thing that I really should say. People think, and you know, I don't want to say people in general, but I hear it when people ask or talk about hanging their food. It's an attitude of protecting your food, okay? And that's wrong, all right? We go into nature because we love nature. We also need to protect it. So if a food bag gets hung wrong and a bear gets into it, they get the taste for people food. It's the same as why you should keep your campsite clean and not leave food scraps lying around. The bear gets a taste for it, they keep coming back. Then they become a problem bear. And they're relocated. If they come back, they're destroyed. So this is why we hang our food bag properly, okay? It's true, you know, if a bear came in and got into our food, it would ruin our trip as well. But the real reason is because we're trying to, you know, be stewards of the, our land, you know, and protect it. And, you know, that means taking care of our food as well, all right? So anyway, lecture done. But yeah, that's the, the pulley system for hanging your, your food in bear country. Well, we got the camp set up, food bag hung, we ate. It's just sandwiches tonight, you know, sandwich rolls, some salami. Um, fire's going, and yeah, we're just winding down. We're probably gonna have an early evening. Uh, tomorrow we do some paddling to get to the next lake, and yeah, we'll just relax.
Okay, well, it's morning, and the night was pretty uneventful, really. Woke up several times, though. There were loons calling quite a bit, and I think there was wolves calling. And the weird thing was, that I think, that the wolves were calling, and then the loons were <laughs> replying. Yeah, it was strange. But, yeah, so that woke us up a few times. Um, but other than that, it was a good night. You know, for May weekend, it was quite warm. Um, no idea what the actual temperature was, but, like, it was plus degrees, you know, better than some of my recent, you know, camping trips. Um, I'm going to guess it was like five degrees maybe ten degrees and uh yeah warm in the sleeping bag so anyway you can see it's kind of overcast it's getting a little more overcast and they are calling for rain later in the day so i don't know how much filming we're gonna do we're gonna pack up and uh get out on the water and head to the next lake ralph bice lake so we actually have to paddle through Hambone Lake to get there. So, yeah, get the day on. Well, we, uh, we're out on Ralph Bice Lake now. It started to rain when we were on Hambone. Actually, probably, what, like, if we left Magneto on and we paddled for, what, half an hour? If that? Yeah, not even. And then we did the first little portage. I don't think it was raining yet, eh? But when we got it to... It started raining as soon as we left. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, it's just been raining since and uh, got out to Ralph Bice. And not hard rain, but just steady rain. So we got pretty soaked. But I guess fortunately the weather's not that cold that, you know, it's not hypothermic or anything. Like there was definitely a moment where my fingertips were starting to feel pretty cold, but. It was pretty cold. Yeah, but. Uh, and at first it was, you know, it's that kind of rain where it's like, yeah, okay, it's raining, who cares, whatever, we'll just keep going and, you know, find a campsite. Then we were having a hard time finding a campsite and it got to that point where it's like, all right, enough is enough, you know, just stop raining. <laughs> we're at a uh, campsite and, yeah, but what do you think of it here? Yeah, it's it's pretty good. We've got our shelter set up, so... Yeah, yeah. so above me I set up, uh, basically it's like a diamond uh, tarp shelter, um, a plow point, but I've just modified it a bit, so I've stuck a stick in the middle, and then I've got another stick on, well, it's not the middle, but it's near the first tie-off point, uh, away from the bottom corner, just to lift it up. It's got a good angle off the back and the side, so... And then we've got the fire right here, just like the edge, front edge of the tarp is like not above the fire, but above the, the fire pit ring. So, so yeah, so we're getting a little bit of heat from the fire and staying dry. Good. It's good. Oh, and for lunch, uh, it's quick mountain house lasagna with meat sauce.
else do you think we should do from here on? Just relax, I guess. Set up a tent, probably. Before that gets soaked. Well, I was thinking we should probably just save the tent. Put the tent under here for now and just wait. Mm -hmm. You know? Just stop raining. Yeah, like it's all wrapped up now, so if we pull it out, the sides and everything will get wet. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right? Actually, our campsite is it's not really an island, because right now you can walk across. It's kind of like a tiny peninsula thing. But it, it's... I don't... It's not ideal, because it's no real great spot for a tent. Um, but it's pretty nice, because on either side of the little bit of land that connects the mainland, it's like a sandy beach, so... Yeah, I sort of want to come back in summer. Looks like it would be a good spot to swim. Oh, look at that. Cool. Well, still pretty gloomy out. <laughs> Um, you can see my breath. I don't know if you can see it, but it's not actually that cold. Like, cold enough I put a hoodie on, but, you know, it's not winter. But it's just, yeah, misty, drizzly kind of day. So, we've been hanging out at camp and, uh, you know, just by the fire under the tarp. We had a game of cards and we we're just going to get some dinner on. So, Noah started some potatoes we just brought out some of those uh small mini potatoes and uh yeah so we started that just a little bit of water get them boiling and then from there we're gonna make some uh some beef stew so yeah we'll see how it goes So the potatoes are boiling and basically what I did was I've got some cubed beef that I put in a like a Ziploc freezer bag. I actually added a little bit of vegetable oil and I threw it in the freezer before we left so I froze it up and uh, it's thawed out now. It's still cold. Um, obviously we're not having hot weather so you know that's our advantage. Um, yeah so I'm going to throw the, the meat in and I don't know if you can tell, but of course, Murphy's Law, it started to rain a lot harder as soon as we uh, started cooking the potatoes, but yeah.
Well, you like it? Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, that's really good, eh? Especially for being made in a camp. Yeah. So we also brought out a seasoning packet of like a, a stew seasoning packet. So it's totally flavored it up. Not sure if you see it for it's out of focus, but there you go, Jenner. Yep, beef stew in the rain. Well, we're done dinner and we had a bit of a break in the weather. So yeah, we took the opportunity and we set up another tarp and we got our tent underneath. So all we've done is because we don't have, you know, a lot of trees around that we can run a ridge line or anything like that, which really would probably be ideal to have, you know, like an A-frame type, you know, tarp shelter over top of our tent. Um, so all I've done is I set up another uh, plow point you can see here beside me and uh, I just staked off the back corner to raise it up a little bit and give us the height that we need to get the tent underneath. Now the tent is uh, like water resistant so it's gonna you know repel some of the moisture and then the tarp has a good angle so it'll work for you know keeping most of the rain off of us through the night so yeah I'll show you give you a close-up so you can see what I've done. Okay, so yeah, you can see back here, here's the stake, right? It's just a branch piece of firewood. And then I just ran a line of paracord coming down off of it. Uh, used a taut line, you know, just to create an adjustable loop and a tent peg down at the other end. And then just as you would with a, a diamond fly or plow point set up, I've got the corners pegged off in the middle on both sides and then another line of paracord running up to the tree so yeah let's have a look at from another angle all right so you can see this is what it looks like from the other side and uh, you know basically it's like my tent is wearing a hat um, yeah a tent is like this campsite it doesn't have a uh, you know any real good flat area it's you know it's basically like a hill the one flat area is where the fire pit is and there's nowhere near it you know with enough space to set up a tent any size tent it would be a great you know campsite for a hammock setup but uh yeah that's not what we're using but anyhow so you can see again just the you know the ridge line comes down and uh or sorry, not a ridge line, but the paracord comes down and connects to the corner. The opposite corner has the stake, and then the two other corners come down. So I've got a good angle for rain runoff. And uh, this side is a little bit open, but our main sleeping area is covered. And any rain that does hit this end, I'll just you know run down. Um, I have stuck a, a ground sheet underneath as well, so that'll. Uh, the ground is soaking like you step and you know the water's coming up so yeah we uh we put a ground sheet sill nylon ground sheet down uh doubled up even so that'll uh hopefully hopefully keep us dry you know we've got our our air mattresses as well so it'll give a bit of protection and yeah all we can do really is just go with it and you know, hope that we stay dry, and if we don't, hope that tomorrow is a sunny day that we can dry things out.
Okay, well, I think the rain stopped, but as you can probably hear, the wind's picked up now. It's uh, about an hour or two ago it started, and uh, you know the tent is flapping around, and so is the tarp. I've gone out a couple times to just make sure camp is all together, and I pulled the canoe close to the tent to make sure it doesn't blow away. Um, yeah, like right now, it's around 3 o'clock in the morning, so the best we can do is just wait till the sun rises and, you know, wait it out, I guess. I'm sure it won't be as bad when it's daylight, but right now in the dark, it kind of gives us that feeling, that memory of when the tree fell down on us in Wabakini. So... Yeah, you know, the only other thing is uh, because the campsite doesn't have a whole lot of space to set up a tent, we're down pretty low. I'm just hoping the waves don't start to rise up and flood us out. But anyway, a couple more hours and we'll be able to figure it out. All right, well, last night was pretty windy, so didn't get a whole lot of sleep from it. Just drinking coffee, we started up a fire, and getting ready to head out pretty soon. Yeah, it's, uh, the wind isn't that bad all up, but, you know, like, the ice was just off the lake a week ago, so, so it's very cold water that the wind's blowing across, so it makes it kind of chilly, so get the fire going to just stay warm before we go but yeah what'd you think of the trip all up yeah it was pretty good pretty good all up I mean yesterday it was pretty wet but the rest of the time was cool yeah yeah the first day especially was really good eh? like good, yeah. good weather nice yeah, really night calm. stars at night all that really good yesterday was good just it was wet. So, yeah. But I guess that's what you get for going out in spring yeah. as well, right? <laughs> so I think that it's also like I've been thinking about like all the difficulties we've had in different canoe trips and like if you always go out when it's nice, like I don't think we should encourage anybody to go out when it's bad, but if you always go out when it's nice and sunny and bug free and everything, you don't really develop your skills that well, eh? It's, it's been easy. Yeah, so being out where the conditions change, you're forced to figure out what you're gonna do. Learn to make common sense decisions and stuff like that. Anyhow, I think that's probably going to be it. We've got a lot of packing up to do and uh, paddle out with the wind the way it is. 
definitely not going to film while canoeing. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs>